We're going to remove this small growth on this little dog's lip. It's a dark looking growth, so we want to take it off because it could be related to a melanoma or something like that. So we want to make sure we, we get it all off. Right now, the veterinary assistant is shaving the hair around it, and then she's going to do a clean scrub. And then I'll be making an incision, elliptical shaped incision around that mass. I'm making the initial skin incision. It's about a centimeter behind the belly button, right along the midline. And some of the light is a little too bright. The surgery light is very, very bright so the surgeon can see, but it sort of fools the camera and looks a little too bright for the camera. I've already made my skin incision. Now I'm lifting the body wall entering into the abdomen through the linea alba. It's a ligament at the very center where the muscles come together in the stomach. It doesn't have a big blood supply, so you'll notice it's not very bloody. But I'm lifting up the body wall so I don't hit intestines or spleen or any of the organs underneath. So that's why I lift it away, and then I, I make my incision along that midline. Then what we're going to do is pick up the body wall and go fishing for the uterus. We're going to go take this as a snook hook. It's a... Uh, instrument designed actually a vascular instrument that humans use and it's designed to lift that uterus out for us and we're going to pick it up I'm going to be picking up the left uh, uterine body uh, left horn of the uterus right now and then pull up that left uh, ovary as well so I'm pushing some of the intestines out of the way with my uh, the back side of it as a retractor while I look for where the uterus is and then it'll slide up to me and you'll see me pull it up and that's my anesthetic nurse. Uh, Angela's helping me, and uh, she's monitoring the patient. Uh, they're going to start to feel more pain right now because now I'm pulling on that ovarian uh, ligament, and I'm I'm picking up the uterus so that the heart rate is going to pick up a little bit, and she's probably going to give them a little bit more gas. Now I've got my ovary and my uterus uh, pulled up, at least uh, the left horn. So I'm clamping off the ovary, and what we're going to be doing is separating that from the body wall and incising it. I'm going to put three clamps here along this ovarian ligament because we're going to cut the ovary away, and of course it has to have a blood supply. So that's me cutting the ovary up and picking up the uh, uterine horn on the left side. And the uterine horn is where the kittens or puppies would be located. If I just cut that without tying this off, there's an ovarian artery there, and the animal would bleed to that. So we have to clamp this off and then tie crushing ligatures here that will uh, be very tight, and we deliberately want to make it very tight so that we can't have any bleeding into the abdomen where I've cut that artery that supplies it, and the vein, but uh, the artery really pumps it. So this is some gut suture I'm using, and it's kind of unusual, um, uneven suture. This is an uneven suture material. It's a natural suture material. It's actually made from cow's uh, ligaments. It's not actually made from cat's intestines. Uh, that's a fallacy, but uh, it is uneven when you use it. So you see in the first one, I uh, it sort of snapped, and then I had to retie it. So each of these clamps is pinching down that artery, and then I'm going to remove the clamp and put the ligature right where I clamped. Here I'm finishing off, tying off my left uterine stump. After I finish tying this, I'm going to lift that body wall and I'm going to gently place that stump back into the abdomen. And then I look at it and check to make sure there's no bleeding in the end. So I think I have one clamp left. Yep, now I'm going to just slide that in and let that go and keep make sure that I don't have any bleeding. Now I'm fishing around with my fingers and I'm pulling up 
the right uterine horn. And I'm going to repeat the same process of clamping off the right ovary, and I'm going to repeat the process of tying off the right ovary at this point. And again, you're still not seeing a lot of blood. I've clamped off the right ovarian stump, and now what I'm doing is I've cut away that right ovary, and I've got everything exteriorized. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the ligatures. I'm going to put my suture material underneath my hemostat. Then I'm going to tie a knot right on top of the hemostat and withdraw the hemostat so that I get a nice tight crush on the ligament, on the ovarian ligament, which contains the ovary ovarian artery vein and nerve and we don't want to have any bleed in here so I put on three we're trained with three originally in vet school um, sometimes as you get more practiced at it uh, some of the other veterinarians may use fewer suture materials and that's fine as long as they're not having a problem and some of the veterinarians may also use a metal uh, clips here instead of uh, hand ties like I'm doing here because uh, it's faster and so that would speed things up a little bit it kind of depends on who's doing it. Um, one of the differences with the shelters is here I'm using a sterile technique, but uh, also sterile instruments, a new pack for every single pad. In a shelter type situation, it's more of an assembly line, and they will usually go cat to dog, dog to cat on the instruments and use them twice. Uh, the instruments here uh, will be sterilized between each and every patient. Uh, dogs and cats don't usually share too many diseases. So, like if they use the instruments on a, a dog that had been in a cat that had feline leukemia, the dog can't get feline leukemia from the cat. So, there's a little differences too in, in the speed of it. And I'm indicating the ovaries there. Now we're pulling out the whole uterus. Now we're going to clamp off the uterus, and the whole thing is going to come out in one piece. You'll see right down below that bifurcation of the uterine body. I'm going to pick up my scalpel blade here and I'm going to cut between two clamps or hemostats and I take that out. You always cut between two clamps so that you don't cut something that you shouldn't cut by accident and you always exteriorize the whole uterus and, and the ovarian stump so you actually can see where you're working. So now I'm going to do the same technique of the ligatures. A ligature means we're doing a crushing technique. We're going to crush uh, that tissue underneath there so we can stop any bleeding that might happen if from the artery vein or nerve right there. So uh, that's what a ligature by definition means is we're actually crushing some area. Suturing something, even if it's the same material, means you're going to stitch something together, like when you have a laceration or an incision and they stitch across it. So I have checked inside the animal to make sure I don't have any bleeding going on, and I'm getting ready to close my incision. And as you can see, there's very little blood here, and that's uh, the uterus and ovaries over there on the, on the drape. And I'm putting in a suture material that is made from a polymer, made from milk, and it's going to dissolve over about a two-month period, and eventually you won't even know that it happened. The pattern of suturing I'm doing is called a simple interrupted pattern. So each stitch is put in separately so that if by accident the animal uh, broke one of the sutures, the whole incision won't come undone. Uh, but sometimes you can have an animal either gets at the sutures and tries to chew them or they're moving around too much after surgery. Uh, and sometimes you could pop a suture. So we won't, I like to do the simple interrupted pattern. We're closing the body wall at this point, and then what we're going to do is close something called the subcuticular, which is like your subcutaneous area. And I'm going to bury my sutures. I'll show you when I do it. It's more like a baseball stitch when I'm closing the skin. It tells us, uh, it, it, it leaves less suture material sticking out. Unless I have sticking out, it, it the dogs are attracted to anything sticking out, and I don't want them to chew on anything. So when we do this, this is what I'm closing right now is that uh, subcuticula. 
I want to do one on either side and then you're going to see this knot is going to be buried under the skin and the knot is something appealing it's what animals like to chew on or, or touch so I want to bury it under the skin so they have less exposed that they can grab with their tongue and play with so I'm, I'm burying it under the skin so that's going to be invisible and it's going to dissolve it will leave a little bit of a lump there and the incision uh, line for about two months and then it'll be totally flat and you won't even know that anything's been done now it will all be dissolved and flattened out but I think it's also called a baseball stitch with humans that's how they stitch together a baseball now the other things that I, we should talk about is the benefits of spaying your pet and one of the the benefits of spaying your pet is it decreases this dog's chance for breast cancer and dogs have 10 breasts same with cats it decreases their chance of breast cancer and they have eight breasts so they get it at a pretty high rate if they're not fixed it also decreases the types of cancer of the ovaries and uterus because of course we removed them and then we also don't have the unwanted pet population so even if you had an indoor pet that doesn't really go out it still should be fixed because of the decrease in cancer and also infected uteruses uh, dogs have no way to shut off their ovaries or shut off their uterus and go through menopause like humans and they inevitably if they're not spayed wind up with either breast cancer or some kind of very infected cystic ovaries infected uterus called a pyometra